Hi, I'm Phil from Attack Forge, and welcome to this video. I'm going to show you how you can easily perform an infrastructure pen test using Attack Forge. Let's start by creating an infrastructure pen test project. We're going to click on Projects, and then from the menu select New Project. Now let's enter in a name for the project, as well as a tracking code. We're going to give this pen test a test window, so let's enter in this week. Now we're going to associate this infrastructure pen test with a group, and that group's going to represent the customer. We also want to assign this project to different reportable areas in AttackForge, which we call portfolios. This helps to track and manage all of the different testing that happens in AttackForge. So let's go ahead and assign the relevant areas we want the data to be reported. So from here, we're gonna add the networks we're gonna be testing. We're gonna click on Add Assets. And then we're gonna search for the different network ranges that are in scope for testing. Let's look it all up by this customer. Here we are. Let's go ahead and add those assets to this project. Now we're going to select a testing methodology. This is going to help us track and perform all of our testing. Let's search for an infrastructure methodology. Now we want to enter in a vulnerability code. This is going to help us identify every vulnerability on the project with a unique code. Now let's take a look at notifications. So here we can configure all of the different project notifications to communicate progress and new vulnerabilities to the project team. Let's go ahead and assign the project team. So first we're going to assign Stas as a customer on this project. That way he can receive notifications and information about new vulnerabilities. Secondly, I'm going to assign myself as a pen tester on this project. And I'm going to assign myself with the testing methodology that needs to be performed. Let's review this project settings and proceed to create the project. So now let's take a look at the test cases assigned to this project. I'm going to click on test cases. And here we can see all of the different infrastructure testing that needs to be performed and who needs to perform it. I'm going to start by selecting all of the test cases and marking them as testing in progress. So let's click on the first test case and see what's required. So this test case relates to performing some port scanning. So once we've finished our port scan, we're going to mark this test case as completed and we're also going to upload the results of our port scan. We'll click on Workspace Notes, Add Note, and give this note a name. And here we're going to attach the results from the Nmap scan that we just performed. Great, so that information is now available for anyone who might need that information later on. So let's go and import the Nmap results and load those assets onto this project. We're going to now click on Scope. Now we're going to click on Add and select Import Assets. We're going to select Nmap as the import option and now select the Nmap file from our scan. Here we can see all of the active hosts that were discovered during our port scan. Let's go ahead and select all of them and click Import. Great, now all of our Nmap assets have been imported. Now we're going to go back to test cases and assign all of our assets to the test cases.
So now not only can we see who's going to be performing the testing, but we can also see which assets are going to be tested against. So now let's import some vulnerabilities from our vulnerability scan. We're going to select import vulnerabilities from the quick actions. And here we have a list of different tools. Let's import from Nessus. So we're going to select Nessus and then select our scan file. And here we can see that the Nessus scan had 2,432 vulnerabilities. But we're going to click on grouped to preserve all of that extra asset information but make it easier so we're dealing with less vulnerabilities. So now let's filter for all of the critical high, medium and low that we want to import. And go ahead and select all of those. Now let's click on edit and review. So now we can make any final adjustments prior to importing the vulnerabilities. We can change the ratings or any other information relating to those vulnerabilities. We can also inspect all of the assets and components and their notes and tags and adjust those if we need to. We can also do custom import passing if you have different types of import passing rules that you would like to use. So let's go ahead and import those vulnerabilities. So now we can see that the vulnerabilities are importing and we're going to get progress updates as he continues to import. And now we can see that our import's completed. Let's take a look at the vulnerabilities. So we can see now that all of our vulnerabilities have imported successfully from our Nessus scan. Let's go ahead and manually add some vulnerabilities as well. So from the quick actions, let's select create vulnerability. So we're going to start by searching for a vulnerability from our write-ups databases. Here's a vulnerability we want to add. So let's go ahead and select it. Now we're going to select group mode and add all of the assets that we want to raise this vulnerability against. Now we found this vulnerability on both the network ranges that we're testing. So let's go ahead and search for those and go ahead and add those assets in. Now we can go ahead and adjust the score for this vulnerability if we need to. We can also adjust the template proof of concept or steps to reproduce, or add some additional notes, as well as making any adjustments to the tags or linking test cases. Let's go ahead and upload some screenshots. And we'll add that in line to our steps of reproduce. Let's go ahead and save the vulnerability. So now let's go take a look at Jira. And we'll see that the vulnerabilities have already automatically exported into our Jira project. And if we open up the vulnerability that we just created, we can see that all of the information is here as well as the attachments. This makes it easy for the engineers to start actioning this vulnerability. So now as an engineer, we're going to attach some screenshots once we believe we fix the vulnerability. And we'll go ahead and set this to retest and add some notes. go ahead and save that. Now let's go back to AttackForge and refresh. And we'll see that it's now already been marked as retesting in AttackForge. And if we open the vulnerability and check its remediation history, we can see all the information coming from the engineers, which makes it very easy for us to retest, as well as all the evidence that's been supplied as well. So once we've finished our retesting, we're going to go ahead and mark the assets that we retested as action. We're going to select the assets and set those to yes. So now we can see that those assets have been actioned and we'll go ahead and save that. So now let's go ahead and close the vulnerability now that we've found that it's been fixed. We'll set the status to close 
indicate that it's been fixed and add a note there as well. You go ahead and save that. And now we'll see that the vulnerability has been closed. And if we go into Jira and then refresh, here we'll see that the vulnerability is automatically been closed and all of the notes have come across as well as any other supporting attachments if needed. So once we're done with testing, we're going to go back to the test cases and mark them all off as completed. And now if we go back to the homepage, we'll see that we finished our infrastructure pen test. So now let's take a look at the reporting. We're going to click on reporting in the project menu. And here we can see the executive summary and make any adjustments if we need to. So let's download our report and see what it looks like. I'm going to click on custom reports. And we have all these different reporting options that we've made available. You can create your own custom reports to meet your own reporting needs. Let's go ahead and generate a pen test report. Now let's open up the report and see what it looks like. So here we have the title page, table of contents, executive summary showing all the testing progress, unique vulnerabilities and overview, testing summary including the project scope and project team, summary of all the findings including their remediation status. Attack chains, if we created any. And now we have the vulnerabilities. We can see all the vulnerabilities have all the usual information, um, including details for all of the assets uh, which were affected, their remediation status, um, all of the remediation history, as well as steps to reproduce. Scrolling down to the appendices, Let's take a look. We can see the test cases, so we know what was completed when this report was generated. And separately, what was still in progress, not tested and not applicable. There's also some mapping tables we have for mapping vulnerabilities to assets. And separately, mapping assets to vulnerabilities. In summary, doing infrastructure pen testing is easy in AttackForge. Make sure to check out our channel for more insights on how to improve your pen testing. Thanks for watching.